Make sure it's not a screaming pigeon. Just take a deep breath here, getting into that piriformis, psoas muscle, making sure you're not breathing shallow. And stretch that muscle, elongate that muscle. Again, if you don't have a wall space, you can do this without the wall. You can hold on to your left hamstring with your fingers, interlace your fingers behind that left hamstring. If you don't have a wall space at home. Just move your head side to side, nice and slow. Just open and close your jaw if you feel any tension. Tightness in that face, shoulders. Just take a few more deep breaths here. Slowly start to slide that left foot back up the wall. And take that right ankle off. Maybe just squeeze both knees again into your chest. Make some circles, just massaging that lower back. Three knees wide, feet together. And just reverse that direction. Make some big circles. And just straighten those legs back up the wall, making sure you have good foot between you and the wall. Start to slide that right foot down the wall, bending that right knee. Keep that right foot still high up on the wall. So you can bring that left ankle on your right thigh. Make sure that ankle's not on your knee, it's on your thigh. So you don't want any pressure on that right knee. And just notice the difference. Find your first edge resistance. And we'll hold this for time. Finding stillness. Coming to your edge. The further away you are from the wall, the less intense it will be. You decide, maybe moving a little bit further away. Sliding that right foot. Maybe till it's in line with that right knee. Okay, just feeling this left outer hip here, breathing into that space. Just maybe counting your breath, taking a long deep breath in. A longer exhale out. Releasing that tension, any tightness you're feeling, elongating those muscles. Just letting gravity take over. That right foot wants to slide down. Thank you. 
Just taking a scan of your body again, checking your jaw, your shoulders. Just releasing any tension with your exhales. Start to move your head side to side, nice and slow, opening and closing your jaw. Just start to slide that right foot up, releasing that left leg, nice and slow. Feel that dull, achy sensation. Shaking your feet out. Moving your legs a little bit. And just move leg another inch away from the wall, using your elbows. And just bring your knees back into your chest. And a squeeze. And just a gentle rock side to side. Just see if you can drop your feet right next to that wall. So knees are bent. So just make sure you're far enough back. And we're gonna take our reclined spinal twist. So lift your hips an inch to the left, arms come out to the T, and drop both knees to the right. So your feet are pressing against that baseboard of the wall. Just moving away from the wall if this is too intense. And just let both shoulders, especially that left shoulder, rest on the earth. Just see if you can turn your head to the left. You can always add a blanket here. Place that blanket between your knees, cushioning your knees. Or you can take a bolster. Place that bolster on the right side and you can extend that left leg on top of that bolster. Just as long as you can let that left shoulder rest on the earth, finding that reclined spinal twist. Let's take a few deep breaths here. As you exhale, Releasing any stress, tension, tightness. Breathing into your spine, your lower back, wherever you're feeling it. Just coming to your edge. And we'll hold this for time. Wherever those legs are comfortable. If it's too much, just straightening your legs a little more. You need to go further. The closer your knees are to your chest, the more intense. You just want to be between that three to five, not above a five. Taking a scan of your body, just noticing 
You're holding on to any one spot. So you can release it on your next exhale. Just calming down the central nervous system. It's good for digestion, elimination. You start to move your head side to side. Just rolling it side to side. Take some deep breaths in. And slowly coming out of the pose. Bring your feet back on the earth, knees are bent. Let's take a minute here. Maybe just take your feet as wide as your mat, letting your knees rest on one another, constructive rest, and just holding this. Make a few breaths here. Just see if you can keep the back of your head on the mat, chin slightly tucked. And maybe just windshield wiper here. Start to windshield wiper those knees. Side to side. Keeping those feet nice and wide. Just getting ready to do the other side. So bring the nose. Feet back together, lifting your hips an inch to the right, dropping your knees to the left. And if you want that blanket, place that blanket in between your knees. If you want that bolster, place that bolster to the left side of your mat. Arms come out to a T and just a Straighten that right leg on the bolster. Just keeping this right shoulder on the earth. And maybe turning your head to the right, closing your eyes. Maybe that left foot is pressed into the baseboard. Taking some deep breaths here, finding your first stage of resistance. Go ahead and hold this for time. See if you can breathe into that spine, lower back, wherever you're feeling it, you're doing it. Making sure you don't feel any numbing tingling or anything painful.
The tissues require healthy, positive levels of stress, maintain their strength, resilience, and health. Ecstatic holds are gentle compression of plastic tissues, connective tissues, and bones. Over time, the more you practice yin, you'll be able to play your edge. And holding for time is not a game of survival. If you ever need to come out or back off, do so. If you train your tissues, you'll notice you can go deeper over time. A dull achiness in the target area will indicate a blockage of energy, which can then circulate freely after that hold. And the fourth principle, again, coming out slowly, it's normal to feel tender, vulnerable, As we age, we dry up connective tissue substance. The content decreases, which can decrease your flexibility and range of motion, which can leave us vulnerable to injuries. Taking your time. Again, coming out very slowly. Bringing those knees back into the center. And just see if you can gently give them a squeeze. Maybe just extend that left leg up to the sky, holding that right knee into your chest, or just letting that left leg rest on the wall. It's that wind relieving pose, keeping that low back sacrum on the earth. Just see if you can alternate here with your breath. Exhale. Bring that left knee in, extend your right leg. And just alternate, nice and slow. Maybe make some ankle circles, flex and point that foot. So a couple more here. Just one more pose. When you're ready, you're gonna roll onto your stomachs, coming into our wall space. Just taking your time. So eventually you wanna have your shins against the wall. If you want a blanket here, you can put a blanket in front of you. And just backing up, you can get your shins on the wall. Your back bend. So, right away, if this is too much, just lower down, resting your head. I feel this in your L3, L4 vertebrae, lumbar vertebrae. If it's not enough, just come up onto your elbows, into your wall sphinx. Right here, you should feel it. If you have a block, you can take a block here and you can place your forehead on the block, just resting your head and just bring your arms alongside that block. Right away, you just want to feel that three to five dull icky sensation. If you're above a five, just back off, come back down from that. You will hold this as long as the other ones. Just notice if you're squeezing your glutes. Release your glutes here. And if this isn't enough, you can always come to your seal. Bring those fingers nice and wide. 
and letting all your upper body weight rest in those fingers. Seeing where your hands want to be. Got you're already in that edge. Don't come up to seal. So just stay where you were. You need to go further. Backing off, moving that hand position. Any way your hands want to be. If you're in seal, letting those shoulders roll down your back, relax those shoulders. You don't want any tension in the shoulders. Coming back down onto your forearms and maybe resting your forehead again on the block. Breathing into that target area. Notice where you're feeling it. And see if you can release your glutes. You're gripping. Breathing into that lower back. And taking your time, remove that block. Lower it all the way down, nice and slow. Resting your head and just gentle windshield wiper, those legs. Coming out of this pose nice and slow. Taking your time, you're going to come onto your backs and just taking any props you want. For your Shavasana, oh, you might just want to bring your knees in one more time. Hold that bolster or blanket, place it under your knees. If you have a blanket, just placing that on top of you. And resting here in your Shavasana. Closing your eyes. Just letting your feet be as wide as your mat. And so you can completely let the body relax. Quiet your mind. Feeling all that healing energy flowing from your toes to the crown of your head, blood and chi flowing into your organs. Greater range of motion, better health. 